And we continue our exclusive video coverage from the 2018 International Premium Cigar Retailers Convention in Las Vegas. It is a beehive of activity, a lot of music, a lot of sound, a lot of activity here at the Drew Estate booth. It's not a booth, this is their whole giant area. And what they've got going on here is absolutely incredible. New cigars, buzz of activity, probably nothing else like it on the convention center floor. And let me bring in my good friend, the, the owner, the founder of Drew Estate, my good buddy, Jonathan Drew, JD, wait a minute, Snacky. Yeah, Fat Shops, uh, Valle oh, wait, 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 what's it now, Fat Shops? Fat, yeah, we got them all. I cover it all. Anything of eating uh, copious amounts of good food and any uh, other recklessness. We've How got you it. doing, Dave? All is well, baby. I'll tell Thank you what. Thank you so much for visiting the booth, brother. It's always a pleasure. We go back a long time. And oh, yeah. this, as I toured the booth just a few minutes ago, look at this. We got Sam Morales in here. You never know who's going to show up in here. A lot of characters Man, here. is it packed right this and is, there is a, I'm going to say, there's more activity going on right now in Drew Estate than anywhere else on the show floor. JD, I have to tell you, in recent memory, I don't remember more new releases coming out of Drew Estate than in 2018. Am I wrong? Well, no, you are right, but I think the important thing is it's not just about the quantity of what we're doing. I think that this year is a historic year for Drew Estate. First of all, with the Liga Privada Anniversario, the 10 year, that's a really big deal for us. Then at the same time, we drop, and I know we're gonna talk a little bit as we go through, but it's definitely a year of new products because a lot of the stuff that we've been working on, sometimes three years, four years, five years, and we realized that this year was the right year to start broadening out some of the lines. And um, I think we got some good stuff in store as we walk through. I take a peek at, at oh, that's the H99. I was just looking at the Liga, they just handed this to me. Yeah, The that's Liga nice. Pravada H99. Let's go over to yeah. Liga Pravada. 10 year go. anniversary of Liga. Let's Hard to go. believe, man. Yeah, I Hard know. Hard to believe. Right? You remember right. when we kicked it off? I do remember. And everyone's saying, what's this Liga Pravada, Liga yeah. Pravada? What is this? Now everybody's a Liga. Everybody knows it. Now let's talk about the history. 10 years of Liga Pravada. Let's yes. talk about it. Give me an idea of the background, your motivation, how it all began. Beautiful. Well, first of all, Let's say, you want to zone in on it or you guys? Yeah, are, oh, they're coming, yeah, absolutely. Right, perfect. So, this is the 10 year right here. You can see it. It's absolutely, you know, stunning on the packaging and stuff. But really, the heart of the brand is thinking back to the days where we really brought Liga out. We run in live, how are we doing it? We run in live. It's live, we're, baby, we're live, we're man. We're straight up live. We're straight up live, live JD. People. So going back to the early days with the Liga Privada, uh, ten years ago, we dropped the original, the number nine, which was a project that you know the whole original crew was working on. We worked on it for a while. Oh five, we really started it, the project. By oh seven, it was really coming to life. Blend was done, and it went live. And um, let's see, man, it's hard to believe it's ten years, but we started off with fifty-two accounts in the United States, and. Uh, it really became like this cult brand for us because it was very hard moving from the acid genre, moving from the coffee infused genre, right. moving from there into that into that space. People had always thought about us as the infused cigar brand. So, you know, us moving into the traditional space was definitely difficult. But with Liga Pravada, it just caught on, and then all of a sudden, it became like this frenzied thing. So Liga Pravada really grew throughout the years for us. We just had to grow very slowly. So the first five years in production, I mean, we were barely selling any. You know, it's Liga Pravada, the heart of the brand, is in the Connecticut River Valley. It's about the broadleaf, the number nine. It's about the store cut T52. So the Connecticut River Valley, Nicaragua, of course, it's got a little Honduran in there. You got the Brazilian Marafina as a binder. So Liga Provada's history is 10 years. It's definitely a celebrated cigar. And it really was the transitional product that took Drew Estate from the infused space and, you know, cool, innovative products to more into that really traditional, really people that to say this is a versatile company. So, you know, in the Liga Provada lineup, you got some new stuff that came out this year. Obviously, you got the 10 year. You got the H99, which is a hybrid. Which is what I'm smoking right now, which is medium, very, very pleasant, JD. Yeah, that one's still gonna be medium plus. Oh, yeah. For sure, and I think that the, the uh, 10 year is definitely full bodied. All right, then. But tell me about the blend on this uh, H99. And what does the H99 stand we're gonna for? Get you, we're gonna get you all the blend card information. 
Well, just real quick, I'm, I see that's a Connecticut Corojo for the wrapper. Yeah, on the, see the, 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 the Connecticut Corojo is on the H99, and this one is Criollo on the 10 year. Now, what does H99 uh, signify? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a hybrid. So it's a, it's a, basically it's an experimental tobacco from the Connecticut River Valley. So when you think about the Re Connecticut River Valley, what it's really known for is the broadleaf. We really put the, the T52 on the map, on, the, on that side of it. But a few years ago, we had a farmer grow some Corojo and some Criollo for us. So that seed in and of itself was a hybrid seed throughout the years. The real super duper details on it, we don't get too deep into it. It's still considered experimental. But whenever you create a new product, you're always, you're always going to go through a period of time before the product evens out, like what we've done with the, with the, uh, on the Florida Sun Grow. I tell you, the, the taste on this, this H9, the H99, provide H99, you say it's medium to full? Yeah, medium it's plus. It's medium plus. It's very smooth. There's no bitterness, no bite, a lot of flavor. Just, I, you could have this for breakfast if you wanted. It's just very, very pleasant, even though it's a hearty, solid cigar. Yeah, and that's the thing I think that's difficult oftentimes, is you get a lot of the guys who just pump in a lot of the heavy right. spice, which is great. I mean, some of some of our blends also are really big on the spicy side too. But that hearty, meaty, heavy taste, for it to give you that, get that, get that smoothness to it, Willie did a great job on, on that. As a matter of fact, you know what? Head over to see Willie. What about the potential of Willie doing it with us and we do a JD Willie back and forth? Yeah, that's fine. In fact, we're yeah. going to go see Willie right now. Let's come on over here. Come on, we're going to go. Gonna go to uh, the uh, Willie Herrera, who is the master blender and it's man in charge good. of production. JD, stay right over here. So, all the Herrera Estelis have been repackaged. The yes. packaging looks great. You've added some new lines, some new blends. Yes. Let's talk about it. Well, everything is streamlined now. Okay. Less confusion for the consumer. Less confusion for the retailer. Same style box. Everything now is very unique to it, to each blend, each line, but still the same type packaging. New lines. The Herrera Maduro is a new line for this year. Totally new, uh, new blend. Brazilian Matafina wrapper. Love Brazilian Matafina. Love, you know what, Brazilian, Arapiraca, Matafina. Yes. I yes. love Brazilian. Mara Norte. Mara Norte. Mara Norte. Mara Norte, exactly. It's, it's people don't, when you say Brazilian, they, they don't really get the connotation. To me, it's got so much complexity, yes. some sweetness, yes. depth of flavor. Yes. Love it. And you're using a I, lot of it I, on I, your I've cigars. I've always loved it, but we've always, he's always put a stop sign for me. Why? Because we, we could never get enough of it. Oh, we it. couldn't get enough. That's the problem with right. That's You want to take that rapper. stop sign to a yield, hey, and then to go. You can get all the Arapiraca you want to, but I, I twisted right. his arm, and now I was able to use the Marafina. Uh, it's got a broadly finer. Nicaraguan fillers, delicious. Now, this is the original. Original. Okay, talk about the original blend. The original is a Habano. Yep. Uh, Honduran, uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Honduran binder on Nicaraguan filler. Okay, then for the Norteño, which, what does Mexican? Norteño mean in Spanish? Northerner. 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 Norteño. So the people in Esteli, they're, they're called by the people in the south as Norteños because we're in the northern part of the country. I, I thought it was going to refer to you the fact that, and, you know, when you were in Little Havana, that's northern Miami compared to how far south no, Miami's grown now. No, no. And then I'm a northerner in Nicaraguan. As well. There so, you go. You know, that's why I love the name. Gotcha. This has got a little that's bit more flavor than the Habano. A little bit more personality. A little bit more robust. A yep. little bit fuller, uh, richer. This falls right after that. And I love the I love that blue, yes. that turquoise, that teal, very very Miami. Yes, bring it back to your roots down in Little Havana. You know, it's 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 a beautiful packaged product, man. It just pops. It Look shines. Look at this on the Miami. The, Look the Miami. How Miami. Now we go to Miami. I think I know where that's made. I think so. I, I think, think I, I, I think Sandy. <laughs> but she, if I, told, I whenever I see Sandy at uh, El Titan de Bronze, she goes, you can't tell anybody this cigar is here. It's not ready to be released yet. I go, Sandy, don't worry. Willie's not going to kill me. He's not right. going to come after me. Right. He won't put a hit out on me. So made in Cayo on Cayo Show. Yes. And I'll tell you what, you were there for a long time before you uh, moved over to Drew Estate. Yeah. Sandy and her crew make exceptional cigars. Tell me about the Miami blend. Man, that is like one of the highlights for me because it just allowed me to go back to the roots back to the factory, back to blending on the same table, back to see the same regular people walking in to the factory. They see their expression, what are you doing here? You know, it, it's just an amazing feeling. It's, originally it was just a Corona size. 
different blend from everything else. So this is like blended it with the tobaccos that we have in Miami. So it's Dominican, Nicaraguan, uh, dark Habano, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a Sumatra binder. Flavor Very profile. Different. Medium plus. Medium plus, okay. Very Miami Fantastic. Ass. And oh, limited well, because Sandy can only make so many at El Tito de Bronze. Okay. To, uh, you know, okay. To a point, but it's it's going to be accessible. Suggested retail. Yeah. I'm not sure. I Don't know. I only blend. You only blend. Not so, enough. Whatever it <laughs> is. Not enough. Not right. Not enough. It is because you know what? In Miami, there's not a lot of factories that are really there anymore. Who are it's really expensive to make cigars in Miami. You're the last of the last. Yeah. That's it. So when we talk about the Miami cigar. You're looking at a cigar that is still going to be relatively limited because, again, it's not like uh, it's not a humongous factory. Correct. And you really, it's all about the tobacco, which we all know. Correct. So that's really going to be the prize, kind of a prized uh, part of the Herrera Esteli line. Yeah. yeah. Got Definitely. it. And that, when is that available? Or is available Everything now? is going to be uh, around September, October. Everything. September, October. All the new repackages. And then, JD, talk about Pappy Van Winkle. Incredible bourbon. You have a very unique association with the Van Winkle family. Talk yeah, about man, that cigar. For about it. it's, it's a great association. Uh, it was a huge feather in our cap with Julian Van Winkle. Said, hey, let's get going. We're going to do a product together. So we started off with a different one called the Barrel Fermented, which kicks ass. That one's on the market, the Barrel Fermented. We sell just through their website, which is pappyco.com. And that one's for the daughters, it's, but but that one is a uh, Kentucky tobacco that we fire cure, we then ship it to, to St. James Parish, where we put up 500 pounds of tobacco in a 53-gallon barrel. That goes to Nicaragua and it gets blended in with the Nicaraguan tobaccos. This one is the Pappy Tradition. So the Pappy Tradition brand, this product for us, we released it last year. Yeah. And so we had our first full year. This comes with our first full year on the Tradition. And um, it's kicking ass, to be honest with you. For us, this was a different thing. What, what do you make that doesn't kick ass, JD? Come on, everything you make kicks I mean, ass. I'm gonna tell you, well, first of all, that's a huge compliment. Thank you. And not everything kicks ass, but you know what? Everything it has our heart in it. Right. And everything is innovative and everything has a purpose, all right? And with the Pappy Van Winkle tradition, what I really liked about it was Willie blended this product with Julian, really led the way, Julian fell in love with it, and it was the real story of it, the original, original <laughs> story is what makes the brand, because right. when Willie first came with me to Nicaragua, way before he, you know, became Never a imagined. master blender. Never right, right, right. being with Drew's thing. Right, right. right. Uh, El I know, El Titan Bronze. And we were talking about that I, I used to come and see all the time. Right. right. And I said, Willie, factory's yours, take the day, blend, here's yep. all of our tobaccos, here's a crew, they're gonna work with you all day, whatever you need. And Willie made three blends. Yeah. I those, still got I got a bundle of A, a B, B, and C. Yeah. So those, that was the beginning of us. As yeah. a matter of fact, I was looking at pictures mm. and videos I made of you at the factory blending that day. I was so young back then. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all were. Wait a minute. Time out. Everybody was. I was so thin back then. You still are. Come on. What are you talking about? Is it seven already? Seven or eight Man, years. wow. Time flies. So that's the beautiful thing about this product right here is that Julian wound up falling in love with one of those first three original yep. blends. So it was great from a standpoint that the story was beautiful, the cigars are beautiful, and the thing that's interesting for Drew Estate is we're a blue collar company. Right. All of our products really, our mainstay area is eight bucks to twelve dollars. Right. Which ain't cheap, but it still is in a blue collar space. Right. Pappy Van Winkle is like nineteen to thirty bucks. Right. A different stick. different animals. So we didn't really know if the market would be able to to say, hey, yeah, that's a lot of it's, it's expensive, but we've been really blessed with it. The market has responded well to it, so it's all systems go, and uh, the right accounts to sell it nationwide. Just kill with it, and it's a great privilege for us. So also. Oh. FSG. Now, Love we feature that in our officers' club in June. We had the FSG Florida Sun Grown. We had the Acid Cuba Cuba, because okay. we've never done an acid, and I want to do something unique. And then we had the Hoya de Nicaragua Antonio. Let's bring in Jeff yeah, Borshowitz. I was just looking over. My good buddy, Jeff Borshowitz. What's going on? Good How to see you, my friend. Jeff and I, longtime friends. And uh, by the way, I don't know if you know that my puppy, 
Baron, my German Shepherd, is the official mascot yeah. of your store in Tampa. Right. We bring him in all the time. I keep seeing pictures of him in front of the lockers. Exactly right. But Listen, they say he's well behaved. He's great. Are you kidding? He yeah. is incredible, and he's cigar friendly. I mean, I, he, by the way, he's protecting the cigar supply. You know, Tommy likes the dog, so that's a good thing because you know, otherwise, uh, he'd be saying, "Get the damn dog." Oh, out he calls here. him. But when do you bring? He's a great dog. He goes, "When are you bringing him in again? When are you bringing him in?" So, uh, Jeff, first of all, by the way, I didn't know that. Uh, men's warehouse made rental suits this yeah, this I, nice because yeah, I got to tell you the feel of this I mean it's unbelievable I've I've, purpose, look at this I've never seen a wedding you can get married I could preach could, on Sunday you could preach on <laughs> any day of the week. I have a dream my friends that Florida sun grown is going to give you massive amounts of pleasure yes. hallelujah please we got to change it up especially when the Drew Estate booth at least Willie got the memo too man we're both exactly all looking good he did I know that now welcome to the we just just featured the FSG Florida Sun Grown and the June Officers Club. People raving about it. Features your Florida Sun Grown tobacco at the farm that we did a show from yes. last year. Yeah, that was a pleasure. I don't know if you guys saw the episode where Dave was out there in the field and he got to see everything firsthand. He was like, we ain't in Buffalo anymore because it's hot. But I tell you hey, what, wait a minute, I've been in Florida 29 years. But Come it's on. Hot. <laughs> it was, we, I went in June. It yeah, was warm. Yeah. No doubt so, about it. So we got a crop in the ground right now. Every year gives us a different challenge. We love it. Uh, bringing back the culture of Florida uh, tobacco. You know, it's been gone for so long. There's a reason it's been gone because it's so expensive to do things in America, but we do it for different reasons. We do it to have something that's unique, a product that had, you know, our, our fathers and grandfathers smoked cigars. That's right. Florida tobacco that's right. It. So we wanted to bring that back in a small way. We had Willie over here do the master mixing of it, making a great blend. He'd come over to the house and bring a bunch of handfuls and say, smoke this, smoke that. And uh, just turned out fantastic. We're so happy with the cigars. And, and, uh, and I know for a fact, it is a labor of love for Jeff, because trust me, you don't get wealthy uh, growing cigar tobacco yeah. in the central part of Florida. And you had a crop that you had an issue with the crop. You had to get rid of the crop this year, uh, yeah. this year. And yeah. so, you know, those are the trials and tribulations and it took you multiple years to get it just the way you wanted. And I've been there and the labor intensity is just off the chart. So you do it as a labor of love. Yeah. And many people told you, I know the Oliva tobacco family yeah. in Tampa said, you're crazy, don't do it, but you did it anyway, yep. and you've been very successful because it is a labor of passion and love. The cool thing, John Oliva and his family were some of the pioneers when the Cubans that came over to North Florida and were growing the Cuban tobacco there. So what was good about it is that we weren't having to, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel, we just had to resurrect the wheel because we knew it could be done. It's just it was a matter of economics. Right. So some people make museums. I made a working museum. Right. So we're growing cigar tobacco for that fact of just bringing it back. And um, it's truly unique. You smoke any cigars with FSG tobacco in it, you can taste it. It makes a difference. And uh, we appreciate the support we've had. The, the consumers have really, if it wasn't for the consumer, consumers, this wouldn't work. Right. You know, and so people really, they love the fact that we're doing something back in America, bringing something unique. and. Um, Appreciate all the help that you know. Well, I remember when you first launched it. Uh, I was over in your your uh, store in Tampa, right near my office, not far from where I live. So, I, anytime I dart out of uh, Command Center Alpha, I head over to the Davidoff store, and Tommy says, "Hey, Jeff called me. He wants me to give you something." And it was a box of the FSG. Right before it was officially released, right. I smoked it off the charts. A lot of intensity, a lot of flavor, very unique character, and it's gone great. Done yeah, great so with it. So we appreciate it, and it's all Corojo tobacco too, so that's one of the big things. Uh, our farm is the closest farm to Cuba. We've gotten so much help from other farmers too, from Nicaragua, Honduras, Mexico, Connecticut. I mean, it's uh, what works in Cuba works in Florida. So we're, we, you know, we're same sea level, same altitude, very similar climate. So. Um, and I know you're blending the, the Florida Sun Grown tobacco with some other cigars. I know Angel, your, yeah. uh, your VP of uh, store operations, he has now got a yeah. special uh, on hell cigar right. that uh, we smoke. Phenomenal yep. using the yep. FSG. Yep. So we've got a, we've got probably about ten different brands, but we work with four. I call them four manufacturing partners. So and that's all we can work with because we grow five six thousand pounds of tobacco a year. It's not a lot of tobacco, and we don't intend on growing on any more. It's not a lot of tobacco, but it's a ton of work. Yeah, it's a ton of work. So ton of work. If, if we were to grow more tobacco, it is more work. You know uh, what I mean? So that's. And by the way, where is your lovely wife, Warden Tanya? Where she is she? She will be here. She's All right. Always we around. call her the Warden. That yeah. is our nickname for her, and uh, we always have a lot of fun with it, and always have a good time. 
and uh, Boris and Van, your, uh, your juniors, the junior alphas in training, they're That's here it. too? And they, and they are junior alphas in training. All right. Thank you Got for it. doing that. We need more. More we alphas. We need more alphas because we're losing uh, that I'm, generation. I'm doing my part. You and, do. and they are coming up as alphas. So, we appreciate it. All right. Fantastic. Jeff Borshowitz of, I said, Florida Sun Grown Farms, as well as Corona Cigars, three stores in Orlando, as well as uh, Davidoff, uh, Tampa. And by the way, those of you that are listening to, uh, listen to us, on uh, WDBO FM in Orlando, Saturday nights, Corona Cigar, the exclusive cigar sponsor. So uh, we always get a lot of people saying, hey, I heard you, I heard Jeff uh, on the show with you. So and, and, we always get a ton of comments. Yeah, and a lot of people walk up to me and say, hey man, I listen to that Cigar Dave show. And a lot of guys don't even smoke cigars. I'm say, I love listening to the show. So appreciate the support, smoke FSG guys. Absolutely, I highly endorse it. By the way, all our Officers Club members got a lot of response, they loved it. Great. So I will see you back in Tampa and Orlando. Jeff Borshowitz, Florida Sun Grown Tobacco, Thank Corona you. Cigar, Davidoff Store in Tampa. All right, All right. let's make our way. We're going now. We're going to Hoya de Nicaragua. Now, Hoya de Nicaragua, interesting story. Hoya de Nicaragua was actually the first cigar manufacturer in Nicaragua before the big cigar explosion where all the manufacturers came to Nicaragua. So as we make our way over, and again, you can see JD is back. Take a look at all the action here. They got the they got the water tower, which is very reminiscent of uh, Brooklyn, where John uh, grew up. And you can see, oh, they've got his Braxton Mash Destroyer. David Salem, how are you? Right here, you got the whole collection. By the way, I just got the box you sent me. I haven't tasted it yet, so you know what? Let's have a drink now. Let's celebrate. What do you think? What would you like? You pick it. You pick it. Very first Jonathan Drew's uh, different uh, spirits. Mixtures right there we got. Give me straight up. What do you have straight up? What do we have? Brixton Mash. Would you do one for me? All right, tell me about Brixton Mash. Wait, we get, what happens is we have to use the bartender. So, okay. uh, oh, good. She's hooking it up right now. Got it. There you go. All right, Braxton. I'll do a mix. Oh, the aroma on this is fantastic. Wow. Hey, it's never too early to enjoy great spirits when you're in Las Vegas. I mean, 24 seven, you're good for a cigar and you're good for spirits. So JD will tell us, Jonathan Drew will tell us exactly what the Braxton Mash is. So what is Braxton right, Mash? First of all, here's a cheers. Mahayim, cheers. Oh, is that ever smooth? Tell me about Braxton Mash. All right, so let's make some room over here. The Braxton Mash Destroyer. This is, this is actually the first of its kind. This is a Kentucky straight bourbon mashed with a Florida rum. Smooth as hell. It's very smooth, but you're gonna get that bourbon on the beginning, and the finish is gonna be real sweet with that with the rum. That's what you should be getting on the bricks. Let mash. me see if this will fit in my pocket. Hold on, we I'm not sure. We can always make one fit. You know we'll make saying? one fit. This right. is great. So uh, the, and is this available now? Yeah, the, it's available. It's not nationwide. We're in 12 states. The liquor industry is very different from the cigar world. You know how you come to here at IPCPR, you release your brand into the full market, and boom, you're everywhere. We're on the we're on the liquor side. We're on the liquor side. It's state by state. So oh, that's, that's good. Do. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good right there. Too. We're brothers. It's okay. Oh, Don't yeah, worry. No doubt. We go back. So that's the Brixton Mash. Then we got the John Drew Rye. And on the John Drew Rye, this is a Canadian Rye. Really good. We got Frank over here. Come over here, Frank. So Frank, Frank how you doing? You know, Dave. Frank's our national, well, global brand ambassador. He's really in charge of everything when it comes to how we're blending, which are the type of products we're working on. We work together, but that's Frank's real key, key space in the company. Mash is delicious. Can't wait to try the right. Tell me about Dovetail Rum. All right, so the Dovetail Rum, welcome to the Dovetail sure. for a second over there. Dovetail Rum, Florida Sugar Cane, Blackstrap Molasses, right from. Uh, Give me a sample of that, will you? Hey, listen, I'm here. I got to sample everything. I can't leave without it. The rum is really nice because it's a regional rum. So the first two that we broke out with, we started off with the Florida. Then we just come back on with that with the Puerto Rico. So we'll keep broadening out the line. We look at it as regional. So the dovetail. So I'm going to hit you with this first. That's our okay. dovetail Florida. 100%. Blackstrap molasses rum. Wow, flavor, sweetness, and some strength. Absolutely. Wow. Um, aged two years in bourbon barrels. Nice. Now I'm gonna talk about regional expressions. This is our okay. Puerto Rico rum. Okay. Coming from Florida, Blackstrap molasses as well. Aged four years oh. in bourbon rum. So you, you do notice they have the same DNA, but the end product is very, very different from each other. There's a little sweetness and uh, spice yeah. in that one. There's a little more 
oakiness. It tastes a lot more vanilla. I mean, these are great. I haven't tried that yet. What is this now? That, which one is that? That one? should be our. Uh, that's, that's called our Liga Provada. I could drink this like candy. Yes. That that's is good. A rip on a lion's tail. Mm. It's just John Drew rye, four-year uh, aging and light, lightly toasted oak, 100% Canadian rye, with lemon juice, allspice grain. Beautiful. Just making them together. Magnificent. And finally, our bricks and mash, which uh, which we had, which is great. I love that a combination of rum and Kentucky straight bourbon. Okay. It is incredible. So, is it available in Florida? Yes. What's what? Twelve states. What states? Twelve states: Florida, Georgia, uh, Illinois, Texas. Colorado, Nevada, California, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Well, with the ex well we're out in Boston too. So. All right, all those states, we have tons of listeners. So you'll be able to get this, the Braxton Mash Destroyer, the John Durai, the Dovetail Puerto Rico rum, and the Dovetail Florida rum. Phenomenal. Spe you what can check it out on our Instagram at John Drew Brands. John Drew Brands. Suggested retail ballpark on this. Um, from $34.99 to $49.99. Beautiful, fantastic. Nice job. Appreciate the info. Thank you. Thank you so All much. All right, let's take a, a libation. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, I'm Beautiful. gonna take a libation for the road. Do it. All right, come on guys, we're going to Hoya de Nicaragua celebrating their 50th anniversary. So let's go take a look. And again, you can see all the action going on in this booth. I mean, there's nothing like it on the show right now. It's uh it's a little it's machine gonna here today. Jamming, bro. It's jamming, baby. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, here we go. Let's do Isla del Sol while we're here. Now you guys what's important right here is obviously it's important when you think through our tin program so would you guys know tins in the market great in the winter because it's china you know you don't want right. to burn a huge stick but also a lot of guys like their tins they like burning through the four by 32 so retailers you start to see this out there now you'll start to see this in stores we call it the water tower we got a lot of different versions of it we got the ambrosia yeah this is a cool gets beaten yeah, up yeah, okay. But you got the ambrosia. We got acid and all in five: blue, red, gold, green, and something. We got the La Viabana. Now this is new. This is in our value category, La Viabana. We got the Kentucky Fire Tour, also. Plus up here, you got a different. Oh, by the way, you got some Liga Privada. I see that. The Liga. So you start to see our big water towers. Right now, introduce some new merchandise, and I think it's worth it's worth talking about some of the merchandising solutions. You'll start seeing these products in stores. You're going to know it's true estate coming this way. So again, you can see there's, you can see what the tins look like. Oh yeah, no doubt. Very nice. Look, you got the swamp thing. You got it in the, with the sweet and without the sweet. And uh, look, Kentucky Fire Cure changed the game. You remember when we did the Kentucky Absolutely. Fire Cure? Absolutely. Now with the sweet version, that's really nice, man, because a lot of people like that. A lot of people like that apple, kind of like that apple teeth into it. Right. So it's beautiful on the on the tins. Again, our brand partners with played in Nicaragua. We got them into the we got them into the tins. We got Kentucky. We got some of the sweet chain, which people are stealing everything. Well, we take <laughs> now look, this is what we call a half water tower. So you're gonna see this in stores. We got the big six foot water tower. So I like this too because this really allows you to get the full presentation. People coming grab and uh, check out all of our tin products because you know that's where it's at right now you want to hit Hoya let's go Hoya 50th anniversary of Hoya to Nicaragua right behind us here we go all right now here's the Hoya to Nicaragua Antonio we featured in the June Officers Club people loved great cigar I got a special guest to okay for this as well this is the Hoya to Nicaragua Greetings. brand manager yeah. right here Dan Dan Barrios. This right here, the president okay give me your names one Juan more time Martinez. Daniel Barrios Daniel Juan Martinez Danielle and Juan. Daniel Barrios, Juan Martinez. So Danielle and Juan. All right, let's talk about Hoya de Nicaragua, 50 years. People don't realize Hoya de Nicaragua was the first cigar ever made in Nicaragua yes. before everyone else. Yes, indeed. It was the first brand to ever been uh, exported from Nicaragua. It was, uh, the company was founded by two Cuban immigrants, Juan Francisco Bermejo and Simón Camacho. And we've been making cigars ever since without interruption. So we're very proud to celebrate 50 years of that accomplishment. And you've got some special cigars you're launching this year yeah. as part of it. So let's go take a look. Well, we have uh, our commemorative cigar this year. It's called uh, Cinco Decas, which in Spanish means five decades. Five decades. Uh, it's a very unique blend. It uses only our prime vintage aged tobaccos, our oldest tobaccos in the factory. We have the privilege of having 
big warehouses with tobacco that right. uh, have been laying around there, being taken care of for, for quite a while. Um, and we basically went dust off the oldest molds that we had in production, going back to the original sizes that were made at the factory. And these are the two sizes, uh, El General, which is basically a church of seven by I like that, El General, I'm the general. Yeah, I like yeah. it, you name one after me. There you go, there you go. And then we have uh, the Adema also, which was one of the oldest shapes that we had in the, in the back. Of these are the two sizes. That, uh, and when you look at this shape, I mean, this is not an easy cigar to make. No, no. It is not easy at all. That's a beautiful looking cigar. Suggested retail. Uh, this one is going to retail around 19, 18, and this one around 19. And uh, flavor profile, strength. Mild, it's, medium, it's, full. It's, go, it's, go, it's always full body. Nicaragua full. tobacco is always full, full body. Full, full flavor. It has a lot, a lot of character to it. Uh, obviously, contains our oldest tobacco. Okay. Uh, and the Nicaraguan essence continues to be there. All right. But because of the aging, it's also very refined. It's okay. Very elegant. So it's going to be medium to full. In okay. Terms of, uh, in terms of strength and body. All right. And then we've got the Cuatro Cinco. Well, the Cuatro Cinco was the 45th anniversary 45th. five years ago. So got this, it. this is a continuation of that line. So, Beautiful. Uh, this is our pyramid. You know, we have the upper rub with the Cuatro Cinco and Cinco Decas. We have the Antaños, which are a full body. Right. And, then and now we have, we have the silver. Tell me about silver. So the Hoya family is, we call it the rediscovery of Hoya. Basically a different perspective, a more contemporary look and feel of the brand. Uh, it's more youthful, more, more colorful, but also more playful with the blends. Unlike our other brands that we work mainly with Nicaragua tobacco, here we're using tobaccos from different origins. Like in black, we use the Mexican San Andres Negro wrapper. In this case, we're using an Ecuadorian wrapper, Habano from Ecuador uh, grown wrapper and a Mexican binder. So we have a medium to full body cigar, uh, not as strong as our Antaños, right. but very flavorful, very complex, given by this flavor. Beautiful packaging. Cigar. Yeah, so it's very colorful, it's a uh, homogeneous family. And we, compared to the black and the red? Uh, I would say it would be a little bit fuller, Okay. but the, the flavor profile is what stands out. It's okay. completely different, the Havana, Ecuador, it's an experimentation with that, with that, with that tobacco. And suggested retail? These ones will retail between five fifty and seven nights. Reasonably priced. All of the Hoya family is reasonably priced. Yeah. Fantastic, beautiful. And as we look, uh, we've got the red, which yeah, the is the red. mildest of them all. Well, actually, this is the, the mildest of them all. Well, the Cabernet is the mild, right? Which actually already existed before, and we right. relaunched it under the Hoya family. So it, it goes from mild, uh, mild plus, medium, and medium plus. And I like on your on your shelf talkers, yeah. it shows two out of five. Exactly. It shows three out of five. Yeah. So it gives the consumer. Roughly what flavor profile, so uh, so they know. Exactly. Yes. Fantastic. Well, we appreciate. The, first of all, congratulations Thank you very much. on 50 years of Hoya de Nicaragua. Thank you very much. Continuously making cigars in Nicaragua yes. before anybody else. The most Nicaraguan cigar is what they like to refer to it, exactly. and uh, there's no question about it. You, you were there before everybody else. Yes, we have the privilege of having jumpstart what we know as the best. Cigar you did, and you're working with uh, Jonathan Drew and Drew Estate. They make great cigars. All right. So as we wrap things up here from the. Drew Estate booth, you can take a look. There's just tons and tons of activity. As we take a scan around one more time, this is a giant area for Drew Estate. JD, as we wrap it up, my friend, great tour of the booth. I know that all of our alphas listening really get the, to enjoy the experience of walking in because they can't come in off the street. No, so we correct. take it right to them and we appreciate the You've the always messaged beautiful to everybody. I remember listening to, it's gotta be 20 years ago, driving in Florida. How long ago did you first come online? Last two weeks ago, 23 years ago. All right, so I'm behind you. I got 22 years in and I remember just listening to you on the radio, coming in when I was first getting going and people like in Boca Raton, that's where I learned about your show. Right. With somebody in Boca Raton told me about you. And I started listening back then, so we got a lot of years of participation together. Yep. A lot of years of uh, following each other. And I'll tell you what, you've done a great service for the industry. You're consistently, you're passionate, you care. And uh, we love you, bro. And it's great to see you and spend time. Always, and we spent some great time in Tampa about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Went to Biblos for dinner, smoked great cigars with your dad, Gary. Yeah, that was we had a lot of fun, time. and I got that ash, that beautiful ashtray and cabinet. My mother, every time she comes, she goes, that is beautiful. I love that. It sits right in my cigar lounge at my pleasure palace, and I always think of you when I uh, when I drive. I to Winwood. I'm coming. Have you, have you ever been there? Yeah, but I'm coming. I'll come down to see you. Yeah, I would like to invite you to Let's win do it. If, if September works for you. It works. Listen, we're neighbors. Tampa, Miami, we're close. Love to have you out. Okay. Jonathan Drew, my good friend. Right, my brother. Good brother. You can see the resemblance, bless, right? everybody. All right. Very All right, good. God so, bless. hope you enjoyed this great 
exclusive tour of the Drew Estate booth. A lot of great stuff. The 10th anniversary of Liga Provada, Hoy de Nicaragua 50th anniversary, all the repackaging, reblending of uh, Esteli Herrera, uh, Herrera Esteli, and also the new tins and the KFCC suites. Tons going on. We'll have more coverage exclusively from the 2018 Cigar Retailers Convention, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, word. What's up? Thank you. Yo, guys. yo. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.